Okay, shall we start? Sorry for the small delay. Um, I managed to, I, I thought I would give you a demo, um, what I was actually about to talk about was on Windows. Unfortunately, I managed to lock myself out of BitLocker. Um, so <laughs> that plan exploded. So, but, but this is absolutely on topic because the talk is about uh, uh, lockdown, encryption, security. Uh, sometimes it's a bit too secure, so you can't access uh, even your legitimate uh, data anymore. Anyway, um, so one slide about me. Just um, anybody who, who might not know me, uh, my name is Horst Behrens. I work for CIB. Uh, we do consulting um, around LibreOffice. We also do uh, LTS versions um, and lots of other cool things. Um, I'm with the uh, project since many years. I'm also active in the, on the Document Foundation uh, board, etc. And beyond that, um, I'm, I'm out there and advocating for open source and open standards. Right, so credits. Um, this is mostly not my work. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to um, highlight the people who did the actual work, my colleagues, Vasily, Sash, uh, and Samuel. Um, the work itself, um, I will um, uh, talk about here mostly um, is uh, an example that it was a customer project. Um, mm, there was a very large um, um, bank that wanted to use LibreOffice, um, which is a great thing. Um, the problem is um, that banking regulations um, all over the world are sometimes rather strict. And one of the uh, challenges um, that this bank was facing was the fact that um, they couldn't um, let the users arbitrarily uh, access documents. So they needed to put controls under um, what people could do with Office documents. For example, um, not let them print or copy that, or even take screenshots uh, from it. Um, so. Um, you might know that from from PDF. It's, it's, for PDF, it's a it's a suggestion, so readers can obviously um, uh, ignore that. Um, there, there's other software where there's like um, rights management system, but there's more of a lockdown here. And in this particular case, um, there is some uh, from uh, for from Microsoft for Microsoft Office. There's a solution called um, Microsoft RMS rights management solution. Um, that is pretty effective um, in locking down um, what users can do with their documents. And that's actually, there was a requirement, one of the entry requirements um, for, for that customer to even be able uh, to employ software um, on their client machines. So um, uh, we went and thought about that and um, looked a bit into the, 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 the technology there and figured out that's actually um, possible to do that um, with LibreOffice. Um, so we went ahead. Um, and it's um, actually right now, um, so there's, um, there's a branch where it's implemented. There's a number of patches waiting for integration into the upcoming uh, LibreOffice 7.0. Um, we didn't quite manage 6.4 for that because it was rather involved and lots of API changes and code changes there. So we didn't want to risk that. Um, right, so that's for the, the outset. Um, that's essentially uh, what I just told you, um, but I didn't want to distract you with the slide. Um, the um, the, the challenge really there is um, for a desktop computers because for on a desktop machine users usually have a lot of things they can do. They can do copy paste, uh, they can save under a different name and then do things. Uh, they can perhaps look at the, the file system and just take the bits and walk away with them if there's a temporary file. Um, they can take screenshots, etc. So um, th there's a level of control necessary, and also a level of um, um, lockdown op from and lockdown support from the operating system that you need. And to the best of my knowledge, um, that is probably only really working to that extent um, on Windows, um, at least for for client for client side. You can do a lot more if you have a virtual 
um, machine or, or a virtual desktop solution um, where you, the users can't really get at the bits. Well, you can then probably still do screenshots, but I suppose you can do that anyway with a, I mean, just physically take a picture from the screen. Um, right. So um, that's how it looks for, um, for this Microsoft thing. Um, basically, um, what happens is there's a document that's encrypted um, on the server that gets downloaded by any possible means, mail attachment, shared file system, you name it, downloads. Um, so normally you can't, users can't access that. So if they want to access it, they need to authenticate against um, this, this little um, thing here in the middle. Um, the, I don't know if I got a mouse, yes I do. This, this guy here, um, which then talks to the, um, to the client, so a little component on, on the client, um, um, on, on the desktop machine. Um, and what, in the end, um, the, this, this, the, this, this little plug-in there needs um, is a temporary session key. Um, that is not something that the user will get permanently. That's not like public, public key cryptography. That's, that's some, some password that the user can always use. It's a temporary session key. But the problem with the temporary session key is that um, if the user can get access to that, it becomes a non-temporary session key. So you really want um, this, um, this whole thing to be um, controlled or, or um, a, a trustworthy environment where, where the, the, the key and the data cannot get out. So, so that's why um, this, this RMS rights management system requires at least the code that interacts with the system and that decrypts and handles the data uh, um, to be signed so that the, the, the client side can actually assess whether it has been tampered with. Um, so code has, been, has to be signed and the extension has to be signed and the user needs to authenticate against this, the client side, which then talks to the server. And then the server says, okay, when the trust chain is, um, uh, is intact, um, it will hand out a temporary session key. And the session key then travels all the way back and um, the extension can then, um, using the, the client uh, component, uh, decrypt the document. But then needs to, for, for that to work, then needs to tell LibreOffice to disable certain things, like for example, copy-paste or printing or saving under a different name. Um, so for that, we had to um, tweak a bit um, what, what LibreOffice can do. There were already are, there, there are, there were a few things already that, that could um, be done in terms of lockdown, um, but it wasn't far from complete. So the, the, the most important part that we had to change was the, the way that document and decryption works because that had to happen in this client library. And since we wanted to, at least in principle, have this um, technology agnostic and there are ways to do, <coughs> you cannot prevent the screenshot, but there are ways to at least clone that, that sort of system for something like um, GPG um, and um, other public key cryptography systems. So um, we, we added API for that. There's a very small wrapper extension that um, um, maps the API to the, to the RMS system that you could um, use also. It's really small, it's more or less passing things through an adapter, if you will. And you, you could do that uh, just the same for, um, uh, for other technology, for, for, for Mac or for, Win, uh, for Linux. Um, right, so, so this, this API then um, disables or enables, depending on the metadata that gets passed on um, the, the features. So um, that's how it works as a sequence diagram more or less, um, again, um, what, what, I, what I mentioned. Um, the, the, the important part really is this, um, the integrity here, so that, that, that um, at least the extension needs to be signed, um, and the session key doesn't, doesn't really never leaves the, um, 
this kind of lockdown or, 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 or uh, signed code. So that never really ends up in, in LibreOffice code, for example. So that, that stays within this, this kind of lockdown environment. And LibreOffice gets the, the decrypted bits out of the API, plus metadata, what is permitted, uh, what, what it can do with that or cannot do. So most of that work actually ended up in LibreOffice and there's a bit of a wrapper on top. Um, potentially, um, you can do some, something similar uh, with uh, GNU-PG. Um, the, the, um, the sticking point really is you want, to, you want to authenticate both the user and you want to authenticate that, the, the code. So, so there has to be some, uh, like, um, um, in, in other, um, for, for other systems, some, some sort of measuring from, from the outside that ensures that, so there has to be a separate system component that looks, looks at LibreOffice and the extension and, and authenticates or asserts that it's, that it's intact. Um, so that is something that potentially, um, depending on um, somebody coming up and thinking that's a good idea and perhaps funding that, um, there could be something we, we can do with that um, API in place. So um, <clears throat> time-wise, oh yeah, there's still some time left. So that's the core change um, that we did that affects essentially um, how LibreOffice uh, decrypts and encrypts uh, documents. That has some, some knock-on effects that would also permit um, novel uh, encryption schemes without any core changes. So there's some thinking around um, um, changing or, or adjusting the way that um, ODF encryption, package encryption works. That's right now a bit clumsy because um, in ODF is a, is a zip archive essentially. And the encryption works like every single item in the zip archive gets encrypted individually, um, which is not a problem if you have, I don't know, a standard writer document and with, with no images. If you have a large impress document with hundreds of slides and hundreds of images, then every single image gets encrypted and decrypted, which is a drain on your, um, on, on your uh, um, random, um, on your, on, on your random number generator, on your entropy. And it's also really bloody slow because the, um, the encryption setup, um, usually if you, if you use a password, it gets some, some uh, key generation function, so it iterates a number of thousands of times over that key to get an encryption key. And you need to do that for every single document and it's really, really slow. Um, so with that, there's this now plug-in encryption and decryption um, method um, available in LibreOffice. Well, almost, um, as I said, the, the patches are not merged. It's a stack of changes that didn't make um, LibreOffice 6.4. Okay. So, um, yeah, I would have loved to show you that live. The problem is, um, as I said, I, um, that um, um, lockdown worked a bit too well. So um, that's how it looks in, um, in Word. Um, the, there's this little, um, so the, the, obviously I had uh, permission to read this document. This document, I got all the rights here. So I, I got this little info bar there that, that tells me what I can do with it. Um, and then there's a, a, a toolbar um, where you can say, well, I want to save that and I want to give this group of users that kind of permission now, which unfortunately I can't show you because it's just a screenshot. Um, and that's how it looks in LibreOffice. So we, we, we tweaked, I mean, among other things, we also tweaked about the, the info bar. So the info bar can now do rather nice, complex um, things like this here. So multi-line and, and formatting there and uh, more than one uh, control, um, et cetera. Um, so that's exactly the same document against exactly the same RMS instance, and it comes up with exactly the right um, permissions. Um, and yeah, so that works transparently um, 
in, in that system. And it's a, as I said, it's a small wrapper extension um, that unfortunately we, we can't um, open source that for a number of reasons. One of them is actually it needs to be signed and locked down and being taken aside. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Nicholas? Is it by purpose that you use R and maths? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the acronym for that. Um, that's uh, lots of ambiguity. I mean, you just don't have so many combinations of three letters, yeah. but it's, no, in this case, it's not, not on purpose. But this R and maths client needs to be installed on the, on, on, on the client, right? Yeah, right. But it's a... It's, it's not part of, of Windows. It is a, it's an optional component that I believe, at least under Windows 10, you can just say this is a package prerequisite and it gets, gets it installed. Like yeah, 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 yeah. You look like you want to ask a question mm. or make a comment. A few years ago, I promised to come to your session and say, bullshit. <laughs> I did my job. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you. If there's no further question, thanks for your attention.